Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us on the Rochester Press Box. Bill Pucker with you, and good to be back, along with Tariq Spence in the middle box. Hi, Tariq. Uh, how's it going, Bill? How you feeling? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And on the far side, in the uh, the the Reds, the Sabre Reds, what do you call those things again? It's the Butter Knives jersey, man. The Butter in Knives. Celebration, yeah, in celebration of the Sabres' third reverse retro jersey, which is this sweater logo, but in blue and white and gold, and it's gorgeous. I mean, it doesn't have Eric Bolton on the back of it, but they're still pretty cool. So, look, as a, as a jersey guy, are you in the uh, in the school of, I love having all these jerseys, maybe the University of Oregon kind of approach, or you like the tradition, like, have a jersey and stick with it? Uh, and when it comes to hockey, have a jersey and stick with it. I like the traditional in hockey. Everything else, do as many jerseys as you want. I don't care. What about you, Tariq? You seem like you're sort of an edgy kind of guy. Yeah, I, I miss the Mets had a black jersey that they won't go back to again. So I kind of miss that every <laughs> once in a while, this is our new jersey. But it's all about marketing anyway. It's just the, it's just a marketing tool. Tariq, we're on the uh, the home stretch of the NFL season. We kind of, you know, we hit Thanksgiving week and and people finally think that they know what's going on. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing's really going on. Everybody's basically trying to survive COVID, make it healthy through the, the playoffs, and that's about it. What's going on is the consistency, and I have to praise one team. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the most consistent, go through everything, go through adversity, get to the other side, concentrate on nothing other than football. Mike Tomlin's done a great job. Ben Roethlisberger looks good. Every time you think they could be let down, like Jaguars last year, they, they just find a way to win. They're 10-0 and on the year. They're the best team in football right now. I, I mean, I thought the Chiefs were better, but they just consistently play who they play every week, and they are the, the staple of the NFL. There's, there's no other way around it. Everybody else is a little flashy. Some are inconsistent. Some have quarterback problems. Some have defensive problems. The Jets have all the problems. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. And so one thing I can say about it, the Steelers stay true blue and consistent. You know, and Pat, they don't blow people off the map. You look at the Steelers and you think you can beat them, but no one has. Yeah, no, but I think that's what makes them, as you said, not to sound stupid, but beatable, right? Like, you're right. They're not going to blow you away. They don't have something that they do really, really well. They do all of the little things well. And if you can disrupt a couple of those little things, look, man, normally when you see these undefeated teams late in the season or one-loss teams late in the season, they seem like they can't be stopped. That's what's unique about this Steelers team is there are things you can do to stop them. This is the latest undefeated team the Bills will see in a very, very long time where I look at it and I go, all right, here's a couple of things you can do to beat this team. You got a, you got a champion at this point? I, it's a little early to crown things. I, we, saw, we just saw the Raiders play the Chiefs, and hard to know what to make of, of that because Kansas City was given a good close game again. But with the chips down, Pat, they, they come through again. Yeah, I mean, I always watch those divisional games with a grain of salt, right? Like, if the Chiefs, you know, when the Chiefs make the playoffs, it's probably not going to be against the Raiders. Look, man, I don't see how you dethrone what Kansas City can do because you want to talk about a team that can do things a lot of different ways. The Chiefs can beat you badly in a lot of different ways offensively, and you can't outscore them if you don't see them twice a season every year. I mean, until I see something different, maybe the next couple of weeks, it's the Chiefs, man. And, and to... Hard, I was just looking on the other side of things. All the interesting looking teams seem to be in the AFC, Tariq. What, what, yeah. What's the NFC going to produce? I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be whoever is the survival of the fittest. I mean, that's the best way to sort of to look at this. I mean, you've got uh, Seattle, you've got Green Bay. We're in the middle of it all. Who knows what New Orleans is after Taysom Hill's win um, and Breeze coming back if he comes back at all. I mean, you've got uh, Tom Brady and Tampa putting things together. It's just so many different pieces moving in so many different areas. The NFC, I think, is going to be a survival of the fittest. That's it. I mean, you're going to have a team in the NFC East that's probably going to be below 500. I mean, it's it's going uh -huh. to really be a survival of a survivalist test. To Duffy's point, I don't know how you're going to beat the Chiefs, but I would like to see Chiefs Steelers if we get there. Baltimore's fallen off the rails. I'm not sure what to expect there. Uh, and Tennessee, everybody seems to just don't understand Tennessee, yet they go in and they beat teams. And I think you got the New York Giants coming out of the NFC East. Suddenly they look like the best team there. What does that tell you? Hey, we're at the Rochester Press Box. We're talking about the Buffalo Bills next.
Original Bay Goodman Pizza, located on the corner of North Winton at Browncroft. There are three ways to get the original Bay and Goodman delivery. Go to baygoodman.com. Thanks for joining us and welcome back to the Rochester Press Box. Time to talk a little Buffalo Bills. God, I hate the bye week. But, uh, you know, that's past us now. we got a game to look forward to, Pat. They're playing the Chargers. It's a difficult team to get kind of a handle on, don't you think? Yeah, it is weird because, you know, I've watched a couple of Chargers games this season with Justin Herbert, the quarterback there. Kid looks like he can play. I mean, he makes the mistakes that young quarterbacks are going to make, things that we saw to Josh Allen. But, I mean, he's got an arm. He anticipates well. And, look, man, the Chargers have lost a lot of games. But they've lost a lot of games by a little amount. Even the games they've won, they've kind of squeaked out. But if it wasn't for Los Angeles having to travel from west to east, I would be a little bit more nervous about this game. Uh, hopefully this defense, with a week off, with everybody getting healthy, hopefully will be able to handle the rookie quarterback and what he's got around him. I love I love Buffalo this week. I mean, I love them off of what you just said. But on top of that, the momentum to strike now, Miami had a golden opportunity to go right up there with the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> they totally – it was a great week for the Bills. Let me just say – evil coming laugh. Off the week, coming off the bye week, it was a great week for the Bills. You get a bunch of rest. Now you've got Miami flustered. I know they want to stick with Tua, but now Fitzpatrick came back in the game. That messes up the psyche of a quarterback. Miami made a terrible decision in putting Fitzpatrick in at the end of that game. Bills have to capitalize, get another game against the Chargers this week. And that defensive secondary – that quarterback, I tell you, uh, he has never, he's never seen a defensive secondary like the Buffalo Bills. He's going to struggle. Well, I want to make sure that we have this straight. I think something's wrong with Twitter. Did you guys see that Twitter broke? Because I had a bunch of tweets from Dolphins fans after the end of the Cardinals game. And then after the Broncos game, they all disappeared. Did they all get kicked off of Twitter? Can we check that out? How great was that it was last amazing. week? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, two took by low. He's the second coming. He's great. You'll see. We're going to catch it. Oh, three win Broncos team. Wah, 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 wah. Let, me, let me throw a little bit more dirt on that, on that coffin a little bit. The biggest mistake that Miami did was they tried to basically go to 2021 with their season by playing out 2020. What I mean by that is you have to go through with a rookie quarterback the bumps and grinds of a the season. They didn't let Tua do that. By putting Fitzpatrick into the game, you mess with his psyche, and now who knows? He could be benched at any given time the rest of the season, and you're wasting your whole progress for going forward next season. You should have just wrote it out, let Tua play bad, play well, live with it, and go into next season. But now he might be a little bit nervous. Pat, you're uh, always uh, the, the McDermott uh, analyzer here. you got a coach coming off a bye, and there's a school of thought that says, you know, the great coaches play well with two weeks to prepare. Uh, what do you expect from McDermott off a bye? Well, preparation is an interesting word for McDermott because there is no coach that is better prepared to play a game than Sean McDermott. Legitimately, like this is a guy who, and I'm not making this up, micromanaged his team his first season so much that he had players practice drive to the stadium the Friday before the game and walk through what they were going to do in the locker room. I'm not making that up. That literally happened. Problem is, you can only prepare for so much. It's why the Bills get out to leads so often in games, right? You have your pre-scripted plays, your pre-scripted third downs. I hope he doesn't over-prepare. I hope he doesn't go control freak. And I hope that if things get a little dicey, which it could be with Herbert chucking the ball around, that he's willing to be malleable when it comes to what works inside the game versus what he thought was going to work outside the game. Did he fix the running game? That's all that matters. That's the final piece for your Bills team. Did he fix it? That's all that matters. Duffy, that's all that matters. No, who needs a running game? You don't run the ball now. We don't run the ball anymore. Just throw the ball every down. We don't need to run the ball. Keep throwing the ball. Pick the game, Pat. I got a five-point line here. Favors Buffalo over the Chargers. I think two weeks rest. Chargers coming west to east. Yeah, the Bills win, and they do it by more than five. So take them. Tariq? Yeah, I got the Bills by 10. Uh, I just think they're going to be well-rested, ready to go. And remember two weeks ago what happened in the Cardinals game. Sorry to bring up a bad thing, but you know what? That fires you up. <laughs> I got a, I'm with you guys. I got Buffalo by seven. Chargers are interesting, though. I mean, with a three and seven record, they've only been outscored by seven total points. That's worrisome. But at the same time, it's a team that's found a way to lose games that they ought to win. And you kind of like playing those teams because the Bills used to be one of them, right? Yeah. And we're at the Rochester Press Box. Like it or not, it's next. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor. 
where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. All of these things show Josh Allen has a strive for greatness inside of him. Falcon Around with Carl Falk. New episodes every Tuesday on Rock Sports Now. Here's a Press Box Trivia Answer brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Are you facing criminal charges from a DWI and feel that you never imagined it could happen to you? Contact attorneys with years of experience as prosecutors and defenders. Contact Kanguli Brothers Law today for a free consultation. You can put your trust in us. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Rochester Press Box. This segment of the Press Box, like it or not, is brought to you by Ganguly Brothers Law Firm. Attorneys with years of experience defending the accused don't go unprepared. Contact Ganguly Brothers Law today. Tariq, like it or not, Isaiah Stewart in the NBA. Oh, I love it. I mean, uh, how could you not? I mean, he, a young man worked his way, played at McQuaid, went on to Washington, uh, then go straight to the NBA. Uh, we had his uh, parents on. Uh, mother and father last weekend at DKX, shameless plug, but I like to plug. Uh, at any rate, I mean, it, it's just hardworking family, hardworking kid. You know, the highest draft pick, I guess, I guess that's ever been in the NBA in our area. Um, so, I mean, with it comes a, a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations, but he's worked hard for it. He's in Detroit, which means he's not on, he's not in Portland, which I thought, oh, that's going to be a long drive to get to Portland. Um, but, you know, he's in Detroit. You wish him the best of luck, but he's well deserved of a good kid. And, um, you know, hopefully he'll be able to play well for Detroit for years in the NBA. Yeah, I think he was 16th overall. I think he's going to a good team. Detroit's going to have a nice young nucleus. Uh, I, I kind of I like him there. It's got some tradition there in Detroit also. Uh, Al Butler, a guy who played at MCC, was at 17. I think Thomas Bryant was a 17. And John Wallace was an 18. Uh, Stewart's an impressive kid. When, when I met him, I mean, he had size and he had presence. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look forward to seeing him at a, at a level. I mean, this was that's what really drew my family in, which we'll talk about in Unfinished Business, to watching the draft. It was the fact that you you knew the kid. He went to school right around the corner from where we live. And, and it was just this sort of a, a great presence about him, great mother, great father, uh, great success story. So it, it, it just basically put the human interest into all of it, which the N NBA and the NFL have done a great job with television on it. Pat, we love these handshake stories. Like it or not, John Harbaugh's refusal to, to shake the Tennessee Titans head coach Mike Vrabel's hand after their game. Uh, if you're asking me as a fan, I love it because I love all this petty <laughs> drama from guys that try to be like these hyper-masculine dudes. Like, Nothing bothers me. Get your job done. Do you oh, you <laughs> touch my hand? No, I'm not going to touch your hand. We're not going to touch each other's hands because you stepped on a logo during the beginning of a game. Look, if I'm a fan of these teams, shut up. Who cares, man? Go win the football game. Like, none of these things matter. It's all inconsequential. And, you know, bringing back McDermott, as we were talking a second ago about being prepared, it's moments like these where I go, thank God for Coach McDermott. As a radio guy, as someone who has to talk about the Bills, it can get boring as heck listening to him say nothing for 30 minutes straight <laughs> and never having any drama. But then you see stories like this and you go, Hey, you know what? It's a big fan of the Bills. I'm really happy that I don't have some, you know, 40, 50, 60 year old, 12 year old running my team who won't touch hands with somebody else's hand. When did we become so dramatic about this stuff? I mean, it's like watching an episode of Gilmore Girls with football. It's, it's every, <laughs> everybody, everybody seems to be so upset in their feelings. Joe Judge and the offensive line coach, they get mad, fires them, get, gets in the whole, all the behind the scenes stories of teams that are collapsing, drama between quarterbacks, you know, head coaches, general managers. I mean, when do we fall in love with this? This is just you being about the game. Well, so the backdrop is the Tennessee Titans come in and they do the old, we're standing on the logo as a unit here. And to me, it's beneath a head coach's pay grade to get involved with that at all. Don't you think? I agree. And I also find it funny, these players, like, we're going to disrespect your logo. Like, bro, there's going to be a team that's going to offer you more money a couple scenes from now. That logo ain't going to mean jack to you anyway. Like, why do we even care about paint on grass? Like, everybody go home, man. What's happening here? They beat you. The game is over. You should have played better. Now you won't see them again in case you get to the playoffs. 
You look like a whiny kid. I think it's different for Harbaugh. If he refuses to do that and he'd won the game, not by much, but by a little. I, you know, you're right. Uh, Gilmore Girls is a good reference there. I think that's the best yeah. we've heard so far today. <laughs> hey, we have the Rochester Press Box. Like it or not, brought to you by Ganguly Brothers Law Firm. Unfinished Business is next. The Press Box Stat of the Week is being brought to you by McArdle's Restaurant in Fairport. McArdle's is open seven days a week with dining available indoors and out, takeout and delivery. Come home to McArdle's. And now to Eichel. He floated one. Score! Hey, thanks for joining us on the Rochester Press Box and welcome back. It's time now for Unfinished Business and Pat Duffy. Start us off. I have a confession to make. You know what a sports jersey nerd I am, baseball cap nerd I am. So I'm a Toronto Blue Jays fan. At least I was a diehard Blue Jays fan when I was a kid. But as I had got older and had kids, one sport had to fall away, and it was baseball. I haven't really followed them all that closely in a long time. Then came the announcement that the Washington Nationals were the new parent club of the Rochester Red Wings. And I found myself, I'm going to be honest with you, on the Washington Nationals website, looking at all the hats and the jerseys, (laughs) getting a little bit excited. Because this is the first time, well, in a long time, first off, that the parent club has the same colors as the Rochester Red Wings. And have you seen how cool that stuff is? There's like lots of shiny stuff that's like sewn into the caps that the guys wear on the field. And the uniforms are super sweet. And it's kind of patriotic. It's American. You're right there in D.C. Guys, I think, and it's Jersey only, that I might be becoming a Washington Nationals fan. But not even a good one. Like one of those guys that wears the jersey and the hat. And then you ask me about, you know, who's batting fifth and what the uh, closing rotation looks like. And I go, "Uh uh-huh. And I run away from the conversation as fast as possible. I don't know if it's right i don't know if it makes me a bad sports fan i don't know what it means but for rochester's sake i think i might be a nationals fan now (laughs) what's great about television is the fact that you can bring the family in together normally my wife and daughter do not watch the nba draft or any draft but yet the fact i watch it for this show and just for the fun of it all they happen to be watching uh last week wednesday when isaiah stewart was being drafted by the detroit pistons What happened was is that there were a few draft picks before that and human interest stories. The NFL does a great job with them. So does the uh, National Basketball Association. Those interest stories caught my wife and my daughter off guard because it talked about how these young men have struggled to try to make a better life for not only themselves, but their family, who they play for, why they represent them. Those interest stories were so big that it got emotional that night. And we didn't even know these young men. I'm just looking forward to see where the New York Knicks are going to pick. But I ended up watching it and talking with them afterwards, understanding that for a lot of these young men that are being drafted into the NBA, this is a great opportunity, not for just for riches, but hard work paying off for the 18 to 20 to 21 years they've been playing basketball. This is the crowning jewel in their family's moment. And they were able to celebrate it on a national stage, whether it was in their living room or at some sports bar. It doesn't matter. But the next time you watch an NFL draft or an NBA draft, just understand that if your wife or daughter or anybody comes into this the, the, into the draft to watch it with you, how emotional can get very quickly. Interesting. Hey, Rochester singer Don Potter does the best version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow that I've ever heard. If you haven't heard his version, look it up. It's really worth the time. It's used traditionally by the Rochester Press and Radio Club as a, as a backdrop to a sports collage that they put together to honor all the people that have passed the previous year. It's a time-worn tradition, the same as it was for the former master of ceremonies of that event, Jerry Flynn, who would remark after the playing of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, he's just glad that his face didn't appear on the collage, until of course it did. As sportscasters and sports writers, we live vicariously through the people that we cover, these athletes that we cover. The fans do it too, we just do it better. We're a little more articulate about it. We also die vicariously through these people. Consider the year 2020, we lost. Gail Sayers, Paul Horning, Bobby Mitchell, Lou Brock, Al Kaline, Whitey Ford, Wes Unseld, Jerry Sloan, Tommy Heinsohn, who somehow managed between his time as a player, a coach, and a broadcaster to have part of all 17 of the Celtics championships. Think about that. There's Johnny Antonelli, Tom Seaver, and Kobe Bryant. By almost any measure, the year 2020 was a horrible year. It's Thanksgiving week. We can be thankful that it's almost over. That's our Unfinished Business. And there's our panel. Tariq, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to know what kind of Nationals hat does Duffy want for Christmas? (laughs) 
Joke's on you. I don't need a new one yet because I got the DC one that's red with the gold that I got a couple of years ago that I haven't worn because I felt stupid, but I'm pulling it back out. Thanks, Tariq. Anyway, I've, I've, already, I've already got him because I managed a little league team with the Washington Nationals. I've got all the stuff already, so I'm all set. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on the Rochester Press Box, and we'll see you again next week.